What's poppin' people? My name is Heligonian, and I'm super excited to be bringing you guys an overview of my new After Effects plugin, Pixel Fan. Let's get into it. So for starters, I've gotten this line texture from Dolly 2, just an AI generated image, and I will drag in that texture, and then I'll go ahead and drag in the effect. So to start, I'm gonna make a simple path with two points. Select that texture here, and then select that path here. You can see that that texture image is now coming out of the path. And I can go ahead and show you some of the settings here. We can change the stroke length to make it come out either side by making it positive or negative. Turn the resolution up here. And we can change the scale as well on that axis and on that axis. We can offset it making it rotate along the path. And we can make it so that it repeats mirrored or not. So you see when it reaches the end, it'll either switch around and be mirrored or not. We can also just mirror the whole thing. So flips it along the path or flips it in the other direction. And we can also fade it in and fade it out. So these are great for transitions and these are all keyframeable. So I'm just gonna show you one cool application of this effect. I'm gonna grab the Roto Brush tool, double click on the footage, and then start drawing over me until I have me cut out. And if it selects too much, I'll hold Alt and draw over the area that I don't want selected. And then I'll go through frame by frame with Command or Control arrow keys or I can even just press play and let it play through. And if it ever messes up, I'll go ahead and correct it. All right, so I've gone ahead and made sure that every frame looks good. We can go back to the composition here. And then I actually need to turn this into a mask in order to use it with pixel fan. So we can go layer, auto trace. And I found these settings are pretty good. And I'll just hit okay. And just have to wait a second. And now we have this mask tracing all along me. Now that we have a mask, we can disable the roto brush effect. And if you want to look at the result, you can set the mask to add, but we're not going to be doing that in this case. I'm going to go ahead and grab pixel fan, drag it on and select that mask here and select that texture. And by default, it's coming out of the wrong side. So I'm just going to drag the stroke length up to be a positive number. Now you can see we're getting this texture coming out of me and it's animated along. In some cases, like here, you can see that it's actually drawing over top of me. So just to fix that, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to duplicate the layer, delete pixel fan, and then on the top layer, I'm gonna set that mask to add. And now you can see that I'm on top of the texture. I find that it looks a lot better if you add just a little bit of fade on the end so the edges aren't so harsh. And I also like messing around with the scale a little bit to dial in the exact effect that I'd like. In this case, I'm also gonna wanna go through and just move that off screen a little bit. So here I've just gone ahead and animated the parameters a little bit to create a cool little animation. And there's one last thing I wanted to show you here that I've done, which is use this nearest to point feature. So by default, the texture starts wherever the start of the path is. And when you use auto trace, the start of the path will be sort of at a random point along the object because it's retracing it every single frame. So what nearest to point lets you do is it makes the texture actually start closest to this point here. So you can see if you move that point along the side, the texture actually moves along with it. So if you want it to look more stable, I'd recommend using nearest to point. And you can even take it a step further and animate the position of it. You could even use After Effects Tracker. So I can go in here and track a point that I want to stay constant. Like let's pick my nose and then just go ahead and go through the whole clip. 
And when it messes up, I'll just correct that frame and then keep going. So now all of those uh, position keyframes are just stored in the layer. So if I double tap U, I can see it here. And then if I hold Alt or Option and press on the keyframe button for the point, and then drag this pick whip up to the feature center. Now you can see the texture is a lot more stable. It's not jumping around quite as much. One last thing I can do is I can use the expand contract path thing here to push the texture towards or away from the path. If I wanted to make sure that it's all behind me here, I could just set it to negative 10. So next thing I wanna show you is one of the more exciting aspects of the plugin called original frame mode. So I have this footage of a car that I took on my bike and it's kind of animated with music and I just want to spice it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw an ellipse around the back of the car here. And then I will set the mask to none. So I just press M on the footage to get the mask and set it to none so that it's not actually affecting the footage. Drag on pixel fan. And this time, instead of specified layer for the texture source, I'm going to set original frame. And you can see the parameters actually change, some of them gray out. And then I'll set that mask as the chosen one and increase the stroke length to a positive number. And you can see already that it's warping the image along the mask. So in this case, I actually want the stroke length to be as high as possible. So I could just drag it up or I can also check to edge and that'll just make sure that all of the texture goes directly to the edge of the frame in all cases. What I can do now is change the scale value here, which you can see changes the amount that the rest of the image is being warped along the mask. So basically you can think of original frame mode as using the layer itself as the texture. So usually there would be a texture coming out of the mask here that would be a layer that we selected. But in this case, it's actually just using that layer exactly where it was as the texture. And then we can warp it and it treats the layer as it is originally as the texture there. And we can go ahead and adjust the mask, we can add some fade, maybe even more, maybe, don't want to add fade out in this case because I want it to go right to the edge. I can also mirror it. And so what that'll do is it will take the texture. If we set the scale to one, it might be a little easier to see and turn off fade. You can see it'll take the texture from the other side of the path and apply it to this side of the path. So it's taking the whole back of this car and kind of warping it along the whole thing. We can also use texture offset here to rotate it. And I can go ahead and uncheck that and show you scale X gradient. So scale X refers to how much it's warping along the texture in the direction perpendicular to the path. So in this case, that's the only direction you can scale it. And one thing you can do in original frame is check scale X gradient. And then what you'll have is a different scale value at the start right at the path and then at the end of the texture. So we can have it start off with no warping at all, but then as it nears the edge of the frame here, it can get more and more scaled. And so what that'll do is it'll actually create this, even without fade on, this really smooth transition. If we didn't have that on, you can see there's kind of a harsh boundary right where the path is because it's just immediately starting to scale. But if we use scale X gradient, it'll actually start off with no scaling and then it gradually scales more and more as we get near the edge. So one last thing I wanna show you here is if we disable to edge and then we just make this a little bit smaller, but so it's partially going out of the frame and then we set the fade out, you can see that it's evenly fading even on the part that's out of frame as if it wasn't out of frame. But if you don't want that behavior, you can check stop fade at edge and you can see now the fade out actually begins right at the edge of the frame. But for these parts of the texture that are more in frame, it still starts at the edge of the texture. 
So in some cases, like if it's going right to the edge, you might think this looks better. That's just something you can experiment with in your projects. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and keyframed some of these parameters and created a cool little animation. So the texture offset here is going up and up and up. And then coming back down, again, I've used the graph editor here to create that kind of snapping feeling. And I've done a similar thing with the scale X start and scale X end. And then here, when the underlying footage actually moves, I animate the mask path so that it moves and the effect can just deal with the animating mask path automatically. And you can see I've also expanded the path a little bit here as the underlying footage is zooming in and I wanted the back of the car to be visible at all times. So the last thing I'm gonna show you here is the actual banner that I've used for the sales page of the plugin. So what I've done is I've taken this painting, just searched up trippy face painting on uh, Dolly 2, again, AI generated image. I've taken it into Photoshop and just applied some color correction. And then I just animated these circles by creating keyframes of the mass path and creating two mass paths on a solid, one slightly smaller than the other one, set to subtract where the other one set to add. And so then we have this con these concentric circles coming out. And then on my actual image, I've also just created a simple circle path, which you can do by just double clicking on the ellipse tool while the layer is selected and then setting that mask to none by pressing M on the layer. In this case, my layer is actually larger than my comp, so it created a perfect circle. Of course, you could also just hold shift and then hold space to move it around, hold shift to make a perfect circle and do it that way. So I'm gonna drag on pixel fan to my texture here, set it again to original frame, select that mask, and I can see the default parameters are already creating some warping. So what I'm gonna do is just contract the texture a little bit until it's inside of that inner circle. And then I'm gonna set the scale to one, so you won't see any change here. And then I'm gonna change the texture offset to rotate that inner circle. I'm then gonna duplicate the effect, just clicking on it and pressing Command D, and then expanding this one slightly less so that this circle is covered by it. And then I'm gonna rotate this one separately and then do it again. In this case, I actually wanna have a positive stroke length. So I'm just gonna expand it until it's on that inner circle and then change the stroke length so it's coming out of the other side. And then in this case, I don't actually want a texture offset. I want scale X gradient checked. And then I can mess around with these parameters so that it starts off looking right and then gradually becomes distorted or the other way around. It can start off distorted and then end up in the same place. So if we disable that circle, it looks like it's not distorted here at the edge, but it is distorted here at the beginning. And then I can add a little bit of fade as well, just to sort of clean up the edge there. So I've just gone ahead and animated those rotate parameters. And then I just added a few adjustment layers with some color correction. And then I added this text layer that I made in Photoshop. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I'll leave a link to the plugin in the description. If you're interested, we also have a Discord. You can ask questions about the plugin. Also have an affiliate program. If you're interested in that, you can reach out on AE Scripts or on Discord. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.